Welcome to the podcast that will teach you how to successfully invest in and build steady streams of passive income from the highly lucrative niche of mobile home park investing. Veteran real estate investor and fund manager Kevin Bupp, along with his co-host and business partner Brian Spear, will personally share with you the valuable lessons they've learned along their successful journey as a mobile home park investor so that you too can learn how to create passive income and generational wealth from this extremely lucrative niche. So without further ado, let's welcome your host for today's show, Kevin Bupp and Brian Spear. Welcome, guys and gals, to the Mobile Home Park Investing Weekly Podcast, where we'll provide all the information that you need to know to successfully locate, negotiate, close on, and make huge profits from a lucrative niche of mobile home park investing. I'm your host, Kevin Bupp, and in today's show, I'm going to be talking about the pros and cons of working with Lonnie dealers inside your park. Now, if you've been in the mobile home park business for some time now, then you've probably, in one form or another, you've probably dealt with a Lonnie dealer. But if you're just getting started, uh, this show is going to help you navigate these potentially murky waters. And so with that, guys, I'm excited to get on with it. But before we do, just have a few quick housekeeping items. First and foremost, I want to remind you of the free gift that we give all listeners who take a moment to leave a five-star rating and review on iTunes. And what we will give you is the exact cold call script that we use in our very own business today, which has helped us purchase tens of millions of dollars of mobile home parks. Now, to redeem this free gift, please send an email to gift at mobilehomeparkacademy.com and just tell us who you are and what screen name that you use to leave the review, and we'll go ahead and shoot that your way. Additionally, I want to remind you of the 30-minute complimentary phone call I offer each and every Friday. I've been doing this for nearly seven years. Now, this is where you and I can get on the phone together and talk about anything your heart desires about mobile home park investing or real estate investing in general. No ulterior motives here. I won't try to pitch you or sell you anything. This is just a way for me to give back and also to connect with my awesome listeners such as you. And to schedule that call, just go over to my website, kevinbupp.com. Also, guys, lastly here, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the show. That way you get notified when brand new episodes get released. And so with it, guys, let's get started here. And what I'd like to do is, first and foremost, run through what a Lonnie dealer is, okay, for those folks that aren't familiar with what a Lonnie dealer is. Well, a Lonnie dealer is an outside private party, usually a local real estate investor, whose business is to purchase mobile homes inside of mobile home communities and either fix them up and sell them for a profit Or the alternative, which is probably more common, is to fix them up and keep them as rental units. Now, most of my experience has been with the latter, uh, where the lining dealer is looking to create cash flow by keeping the units as rentals within your park. But uh, surely you're going to run across both scenarios. Now, first, I'd like to cover the less common, which is the fix and flip scenario. Now, here's an example I'm going to give you, just so you kind of have a a general context of what this relationship might look like. A local real estate investor uh, comes in and buys a used mobile home in your park. Let's say he purchases it for $5,000, and then he's going to put another $4,000 into the renovations, and so he's all into it for $9,000. Now, the park that he's doing this in, uh, that again, that you own, has lot rents at $300 per month. Now, let's say this renovation process takes him uh, two months to complete and then another month to secure a a buyer. And so now he has three months of a lot rent payments equal to $900 into this deal plus the $9,000 for the home and the renovation. So he's into that home at this present time for $9,900. And now that the home's completed, that owner of that unit's going to mark that home up to whatever the retail price is, uh, either a cash price or maybe he's gonna do some type of creative financing, owner financing, lease to own. But in any event, I'm gonna keep this example simple. He lists the property for $15,000, ultimately secures a buyer at $15,000. His potential profit there is $5,100. If he flips the home, If he sells it on owner financing or some type of other creative uh, seller financing terms, then he also might have an annuity for a number of years with an incoming monthly mortgage payment. Now, that is the first scenario, and that's a fix and flip scenario. The more common scenario that you're going to probably run into as a park owner is a Lonnie dealer who intends to fix that mobile home and then keep it as a rental in your community, right? Their, Their objective is to create a cash flowing portfolio of mobile homes. 
the reason why they chose mobile homes? Who knows? There's a lot of different teachers and educators out there that are uh, uh, training folks on how to purchase mobile homes and, and start their real estate investing portfolio. And so this is just one of the many different ways you can make money in real estate. And so these folks are looking for mobile homes, not the entire park, but mobile homes inside of communities such as yours. And again, their money is made in the cash flow that exists between the monthly lot rent, again, using the example of $300 a month, So their money is made between the monthly lot rent and then the total rent that they can get for that home. So for example, let's say that the lot rent is $300 per month and that Lonnie dealer has a single wide that he can rent for $700 per month. His potential gross monthly profit before maintenance and repairs is $400 or $4,800 annually. Now remember, in this scenario, we aren't taking into account the upkeep that he is responsible for, which will surely eat into his profits. In addition to that, you've also got things such as um, mobile home taxes on an annual basis and, and other just operational items associated with owning that unit. Now, as the mobile home park owner, okay, let's step into our shoes. As the mobile home park owner, this might seem like a brilliant way to sell any of your vacant park owned homes and save yourself the cost of renovations and headache associated with that, right? More than likely, again, if you're just getting started, you're going to end up running across uh, mobile home park opportunities that come with a litany of vacant mobile homes, vacant park-owned mobile homes, okay? And if you already own parks, then you probably have, right? You've, you've purchased uh, communities that have a, sometimes just a handful, sometimes a lot um, of vacant park-owned homes. And now don't get me wrong, you know, we've done this many times where we've worked with lining dealers and uh, we've worked with many different lining dealers over the past. And it could be a huge win-win to get those vacant park owned homes off your books and to get someone else responsible for them, right? It could be just a phenomenal relationship so long as you know the risk and understand the risk associated with it. In fact, we currently have Lonnie dealers in at least six of our mobile home communities at present. And for the most part, it's it's been a, a solid thing. I mean, it's been a good thing. But there are surely risks associated with this type of endeavor. And here's where... I've seen the relationship between a mobile home park owner and a Lonnie dealer go south. And uh, you know, for this, I'd like to share a real life example that happened in a mobile home park that we purchased out of foreclosure a few years back. In fact, the Lonnie dealer slash park owner relationship was one of the primary reasons that that park went into foreclosure in the first place. So let me explain. This park was a 77 space community located in Georgia and was nearly 100% full prior to us purchasing it, prior to it going into foreclosure. Now of those 77 spaces, 28 of the homes in the park were owned by one Liney dealer. One local investor owned 28 of those mobile homes and the rest were tenant owned homes. Now for the owner of the park, it seemed like a great scenario, okay? He bought into this. He had, instead of having 77 tenants to collect rent from, he ultimately had 50, okay? He had 50 total tenants because 49 of them were tenant-owned homes and the remainder were this one lining dealer that owned the 28 homes, okay? So again, it seemed like a great scenario, much easier than collecting from 77 total tenants. Now, lot rents in this community were very, very low. They were at $150 per month, and the market at that time was around $250. Well, the park owner felt justified, just like a lot of us do when you purchase a community that has under market rents. That park owner, when he purchased the community, he felt justified at some point in the first year or two to send a notice out to residents that he was going to increase the rents to $200 a month. And I can tell you that he probably didn't hear a peep from any of the resident owned homes, you know, maybe one or two, but really, most residents know what the market rents are in the area. And so they know that they've been getting a great deal for a very long time. And so moving up to $200 a month, knowing that the market's still 250, it's still a phenomenal deal. And so again, he didn't hear a peep more than likely from the different tenant owned homes in that community. However, the Lonnie dealer, the one that owned those 28 homes was quick to push back because to him, it wasn't just a small $50 increase, but rather a $1,400 monthly hit to his pocket. Okay, remember he owns 28 homes. That $50 times 28 is $1,400. That's a fairly significant amount of money. Now, this was enough for him to threaten that park owner that if he didn't keep his rents at $150 a month, that he would move his trailers somewhere else. And 
for the most part, I would say that that normally is a bluff. Now, remember, it's very expensive to move mobile homes. It might cost anywhere from three to $5,000 to move and reset that single wide mobile home. And so it would take a very long time to recapture that expense associated with moving and resetting that home by saving $50 a month, okay? And so a lot of times that just doesn't happen. It's merely a bluff. But guess what happened? That Lonnie dealer, he moved 18 of the 28 homes over the next three months, and then he removed the remainder over the following six months. And so those 28 homes made up 36% of the park's total revenue, which pushed this mobile home park owner, the guy that owned the park, into financial distress. Okay, he lost 36% of the park's total revenue. And not only that, the bank who held the note quickly caught wind of what happened and started threatening to call the loan due because now it's at risk of going into foreclosure. They've got wind that all these homes just moved out of there. Now they're trying to recoup their losses or basically save from losing um, all their investment and they're, they're pushing that park owner to pay that loan off in full. Now in the end, the park owner, he couldn't recover. He couldn't, he couldn't pay the loan off in full and he ended up going into default. And we bought that park at an 80% discount a few years later of what he paid for. Now, I will say that this is an extreme example. I don't want to scare you uh, away from working with Lonnie dealers. This is very much an extreme case, but it's one that needs to be considered when looking at a mobile home park that has a large percentage of homes owned by just one individual. Now, we mitigate our risk by limiting the number of units owned to no more than 5% of the total homes within the community. And so if you have a 100 space park, we don't want one person owning more than five homes in that respective community. And the reason is, is that never do we wanna hand over the leverage and all the negotiating power to any one third party, okay guys? It's just not worth the risk. So if you have a community, you've got someone that comes in, they seem like um, they're a local investor and they seem like just, uh, they were sent from God, right? Like you've got a hundred space park, you've got 20 vacant park on homes. And this local investor says, I will take all 20 of those. I'll renovate them. I'll get them leased up. I'll start paying you lot rent. Just know that while that might look very attractive, there are significant risks associated with letting that one individual take that number of homes from you. Because again, worst case scenario, something happens, the relationship sours and down the road, that one individual moves 20 homes out of your community, which is going to be incredibly impactful because you've just lost 20% of your total revenue, which if you've got debt on the property, more than likely will throw you into a negative debt service situation. Don't end up there. It's not worth it. Ultimately, I want you to make a lot of money. I want you to be profitable, and that's not the way to do it. And so as you can see, there are both pros and cons when working with these Lonnie dealers. And for the most part, again, our experience has been nothing but positive, so I don't want to scare you away here. Now, in the coming episodes, I'm also going to be covering how to find and build these professional relationships with local Lonnie dealers so that you can fill the empty homes in your mobile home park much faster. And so, guys, with that, that's all I have for today's show. I appreciate you and wish you nothing but success in this incredible investment niche. If there's ever anything that myself or my team can do to help you on your journey, please don't hesitate to reach out and or schedule one of those 30 minute calls with me. And so until next time, guys, you take care. Congratulations for taking the necessary steps to achieving massive success through the highly lucrative niche of mobile home park investing. To learn more about partnership and passive investment opportunities with Kevin and Brian, please visit www.investwithsunrise.com. Also, be sure to visit our website, www.mobilehomeparkacademy.com, to download your free digital ebook version of the 21 biggest mistakes investors make when buying their first mobile home park and how you can avoid them.